If the universe is quantum, then we are too. Why is there some inflation built into Bitcoin? I can't tell you the reason that uh, uh, Satoshi uh, created the, the protocol he did to be able to do that, but it's probably about distribution and trying to get, and drive a, a fairer distribution as this transition to system. Um, but eventually, over time, over time, it's just a neutral reserve. Uh, it's a, just a neutral reserve asset. Um, and, and again, when people think about inflation or deflation in a market, it, it, what, what's actually happening is, is that that should be measuring prices. So, so in in this case, a neutral reserve asset that can't be manipulated would measure prices falling. If the state can print infinite amounts of money, then why do we pay taxes? <laughs> Again, um, because if the state printed uh, infinite amounts of money, people would question question exactly what you're you're asking. And over time, that's what eventually what ends up happening. Um, and where we uh, so so to be fair, for a long time, uh, the state didn't print infinite amount of money. Uh, money they printed it at a rate that you didn't really notice. Effectively, that low low amount of theft each year that compounded in your purchasing power, um, and and so people just got used to it. And then at the end of that cycle. Um, that rate has to go up because the debt's insolvent. And so the, the, um, you have two different forces, one driven by technology driving prices down. That should be the world we live in. And an opposite force trying to manipulate money to pay back insolvent debt. What would you say to a gold bug? First, they believe that Bitcoin has no intrinsic value compared to gold. So uh, to, the, to that one, I would ask them why. Why do they believe that gold has? Uh, could, because that's that's a belief system that dri drives that. That they believe gold has interest, uh, in, intrinsic value, and a network can't. And a network can't. So why do they believe that's true? And and is that belief formed through essentially five thousand years of recorded history? Um, and and is that why they believe um, that it's always been? Uh, uh, it, it always had has had uh, value and was the hard metal. So I, I would ask them to why it can't, rather than um, than than follow a statement that it can't. Uh, second, the issue with Bitcoin is that it's not private because of KYC. If you went back to to gold, why gold centralizes in, in the first place, and then and then the six one zero two attack or anything else or 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 that centralization produces a risk for gold holders. Um, so I would ar argue that it's effectively KYC as well, because, because you're not going to shave off pieces of, uh, of, of your gold bar to pay for ice cream in the market. Um, it, the economy does not work that way. So um, what, what I think many people though, if I go even a bigger level than, than that, I think many people get confused about that, that difference is um, they, they need, they want the KYC secure, they want the security in the network from Bitcoin on the base layer. And Bitcoin base layer is the strongest, most decentralized, decentralized and secure blockchain period, and it cannot be hacked. It had to be that strong to prevent every state attack so the more attacks, it gets stronger and stronger. It's literally anti-fragile. And so what's happening on top of that layer are different, and if you think about that layer as being um, TCP IP, like the base layer of the internet, and it's the, this is the base layer of money and the new peer-to-peer -peer internet. The layers on top will add security, add, add, add privacy. Um, on, on top of that without sacrificing that base layer. So that's what's happening, and I think what people, including a whole bunch of people in, in, in all of the other coins, they were looking for use cases that solved their individual issue without realizing that solving that individual issue um, would create risk at the base layer and, and make it inevitable that that, that that blockchain would be captured by the state. So Bitcoin challenge, solves that in a totally different way. It's secure and decentralized as the base layer, and then future layers on top of it can add the different functionality. Third, they believe that Wall Street is too involved in Bitcoin, so it's not outside the system. It actually doesn't matter how much Bitcoin you have; you have no more vote. So if you have if you have a hundred thousand sats, if you have ten thousand sats, um, 
and somebody has 150,000 Bitcoin, they have no more vote or no more power in the network than you. So it operates completely different. It, 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 why, why this is so hard to see, it operates exactly the opposite of the world we live in today, where, where things centralize and they get uh, stronger and stronger and stronger by the manipulation of money. And those at the, at the top, it keeps on concentrating. So the point point one percent get richer, the point one percent get richer, and they it's a uh, and it and if you look over time, you can see that evidence from the existing system. It gets worse and worse and worse everywhere. Um, Bitcoin is exactly the opposite. So it would be in a world that looked like that, where everybody was measuring the system from the system. It would be easy to to confuse what was and if somebody like shell bought bitcoin they would think oh that's been captured by corporate interest because that's what they they haven't done the work on bitcoin to understand how it's decentralized and secure and nobody with more more money in it has more power than anyone else and so it would be easy to see it would be easy to be confused by that when you're measuring essentially from a system of manipulation, Bitcoin operates exactly the opposite. In other words, in time, the only way to accrue more Bitcoin is to provide value to others, period. Um, if you're a rent extractor from on, on top, essentially spending more than you earn or more value than you're creating, or hiring, let's say, hiring an army to protect you, you're distributing your Bitcoin. It's, the, it's literally that simple. So it's, it's a, but, but it's hard to see because it operates exactly 180 degrees from, from our existing financial system. I really want to understand more with an example. From the current system, it looks like Bitcoin would be similar to fiat when 82% is held by 1% of addresses. But that's the thing in a few talks you've done. And, and right now you just said the Bitcoin system does not equal power. In the new system, trying to control through Bitcoin means distributing it to others. I'm still having a hard time understanding, like just with an example, do you, do you have like an example how a malicious actor with high concentrations couldn't pursue the similar evils that we see in fiat? So, so, and, and I wanna qualify that. If you could create a debt-based system on top of Bitcoin, then you could just kind of concentrate well, uh, wealth. But because the debt-based system in a, in, in a world where, where, Prices are falling to the marginal cost of production, and the marginal cost of production is is exponentially getting cheaper with technology, artificial intelligence. It means the natural world is 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 falling in price. So the only thing that could measure that is something outside the system that couldn't be manipulated. So that's what Bitcoin is. It's measuring. It's actually, it, it, I, I think it's a misnomer from people inside a system saying Bitcoin's going up in price forever. What's actually happening, because money shouldn't go up in price. Money should measure everything else. And so what's actually happening because of its fixed, it, it, the 21 million units, um, its fixed supply, and the, that those rules, you can't change those rules because it's not able to be manipulated. Um, what essentially economic law is flowing to it. In other words, all prices are falling forever against Bitcoin. Now, what I just said matters a lot for the next step of what you what you asked. So let's imagine I created a debt-based system on top of Bitcoin and I controlled, and then prices were falling in Bitcoin terms over and over and over. That means to pay back the debt, the debt would be rising exponentially in terms of Bitcoin. So the person who made that loan essentially would would be liquidated. It would be like a bank making a bad loan with no Federal Reserve to back the bank. So the person that made the loan in Bitcoin terms to be able to create essentially prey on I have a whole bunch of money and I'm going to make every and I'm going to use my money to be able to drive this, I'm going to create more money, is essentially going to be liquidated because they don't understand the uh, prices are falling in Bitcoin terms, meaning the debt gets more expensive. That game will be played. It'll get played over and over and over again. And as people get liquidated, less and less debt will be in the system. Because in this in this technology, um, it's almost like, to me, to me, it's almost like the BlackBerry iPhone example. And, and, and people thought, and, 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 
BlackBerry thought it was competing against a new phone. And it was competing against something way more broad than a phone. And so when you think about what's happening today in, in Bitcoin and then the network effect on top of the Bitcoin, or the, essentially a bearer instrument with zero counterparty risk, Bitcoin, the base layer, with Lightning and other technology that's building on top of layers, you have a bearer instrument with unlimited velocity in the network. And what I just said removes the need for debt or to a great deal the need for debt because, uh, because you don't need um, massive debt to be able to build economies. You actually have or massive, massive manipulation of money or massive debt to be able to drive velocity in currencies. You have velocity in the network itself. And so what that means is people that are playing games like they played in the existing financial system to be able to accrue more, more money are likely going to get wiped out in the new one and it's going to distribute their Bitcoin to it to others. And that distribution is going to constantly, constantly happen. Shouldn't Turkey and Argentina already be a bigger example of Bitcoin adoption? I've, uh, uh, I've, I've answered this on many different podcasts recently to, to, um, to your Turkey, Argentina, Venezuela question. Um, and I answer it in a different way. For those that think Bitcoin is hyper Bitcoinization is going to happen tomorrow. I, I, I say, if it was going to happen tomorrow, then then we could look, logic would tell you that Venezuela, Argentina, Turkey, they would have 95, 99% Bitcoin adoption instead of 5%. And so what does that tell you about human nature? We, we measure a system from a system and we reinforce through our actions that system we live in. And, and when things are breaking, we trust somebody else is going to fix it from that very same system. And you can see that evidence all over the world as society in some of those areas crumbles, people still lean into that system thinking there's an obvious choice from a new leader is going to save them. And a new, a new amount of debt is going to save them. Or they get wiped out, the banking system collapses either through, through complete failure or through hyperinflation a reset of the currency and then and then they go right back to it won't happen again and it happens again and you can see throughout history uh, through the last 20 years over and over and over again people getting washed out to completely rug pulled over and over and so why are they still in the system and they're not bitcoiners it's because because that bias of thinking that of believing somebody else can save us is really strong. Um, so, and and so instead of investigate where you might have been wrong before, invest investigate something on first principles. The 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 data shows most people don't. They stay stuck, and as they stay stuck, they get more ang anxious. And as they get more anxious and more fear runs into the, their, their world. They're, le they're more than likely to reinforce that world. So what does that tell us about where Bitcoin is going to be? There's a high chance of dictators and individual loss of freedoms uh, along the way on this road. But it doesn't change the fact that Bitcoin is essentially is inevitable. It just changes who is seeing that future. So if you're early, if you're curious, open enough to understand what we're talking about right now and look at first principles on why, if this is more decentralized, more secure every year on the, on the base layer. If every attack makes it stronger and more and more users are moving to it, there's an entire ecosystem on top of it now that's being built. Being built, I would think you would want to explore that. Um, now, I can only say what I want to do because I want to live in a world based on uh, on truth. I want my kids to li live in a world based on truth instead of this this lie. But if you're living in that other world, you're probably going to be really, I think you're going to be surprised by a whole bunch of events that you didn't think could happen in your lifetime. They keep on happening with greater and greater fre frequency from the existing system. And if you're in Bitcoin, you'll see, you'll see an optimistic, hopeful future that's building as more and more people are moving over to it. Thank you so much, Jeff. Actually, you're the one who opened my eyes to that. Um, I... Okay, well, your ego death through Bitcoin discussion with Robert Breedlove really connected all the dots for me and made me think about how I allocate my time. 
I'm literally one of those people you described on that podcast as having bought Bitcoin, but still <laughs> spending their time in fiat. So I decided I wanted to, co to consciously allocate my time to the Bitcoin system. Uh, to do so, I've tried to come up with a few mantras or guidelines. Uh, here they are. I, I no longer reinforce the system by yelling at the system, especially in my YouTube content. I no longer allocate my time to working for money or chasing bottom lines. I minimize the time I spend consuming content involving yelling at the system, which <laughs> <laughs> I do have an issue with. I, I do that often anyway. And I focus my time on building the truth-based Bitcoin system I want to see in the world. So I believe long-term Bitcoin wins, but in the short term, I'm kind of struggling with dealing with inflation from the fiat world while we're in a bear market. My rent has gone up about 30% and I'm, I need to pay for it in fiat. So as a Bitcoiner who wants to live in the new system now, how can I get by day to day through the bear market and system transition if I still require more and more fiat money in today's world? So, so I, I think first off, what I would say is, is the, are those small changes that you made improving how you feel about life each day? Absolutely, Jeff. I've, I have, I've had very little hope to be honest. I'm in my thirties. I'm, yeah, it's, it's not very, doesn't seem like a very fun world in the fiat world. Yeah. And, and so, so it's already made a difference and, and thank you for that. So it, it, if you can imagine just one more person and I, I, lots of people said what you said about that Robert Breedlove po uh, podcast and lots of people are saying kind of, I flipped the, uh, or, or some of what I said had resonance to be able to understand, wait, I actually control the world I, uh, I see. And if enough people start to understand that, then the world changes to, to what they want. So now, the next step for, for for you, and by the way, this is for most people because most of the world is still transacted in fiat and there's pockets and more and more pockets that are moving to Bitcoin. Um, and those pockets are disparate right now. They're all, they're in different regions of the, uh, the world, but but you, you there's nothing you could do to solve the existing system problem. You can empathize with all the people stuck in it. You can hope for better that they could understand that they can easily just walk across to a new new system but what can you do beyond that as you do you probably you reached out for this podcast from that talk so now we're talking you i suspect that this podcast will probably reach other people and bring you into that community closer that is the community that you want to to see and out of that community you'll probably see all sorts of different opportunities because most bitcoin companies and, and and entrepreneurs that understand what we're talking about right now at that level only want to hire bitcoiners and those bitcoiners have all various skills it's crazy how the depth of talent that that and because that depth of talent would just mirror depth of talent in the world and now those people are operating on a, a different system. So the amount of opportunities that are that are coming in Bitcoin, if you poke your head up to be able to take those opportunities and lean into that system, it's it's literally staggering. That's kind of, and that's why I said, even for myself, um, I I have to admit I had hypocrisy. I had ten percent, or I had Bitcoin holding, and ninety percent of my time was in the existing ecosystem and why part of the reason of starting ego death capital is to flip that 90 percent into the bitcoin ecosystem so i could help the, those entrepreneurs i cannot believe what i'm getting i get to do as a result of that actually i'm sitting in nightig's office on the on 65th floor in, in new york <laughs> um uh, right now um because i came in to help uh, help some of Wolf's companies and uh, and and did office hours uh, office hours with them. The people I get to meet as a result of this, and then how much opportunity there is in this space, it it just involves getting close to some of the really really cool people doing cool things in this, and and you're welcomed with open arms. It really does give me a lot a lot of hope for sure. During that that talk with Robert Breedlove, you explained that we could allocate more of our time to doing what we love and being in flow on a Bitcoin standard. So flow is a state of consciousness and a vibrational frequency. And as you discussed, an even higher state is enlightenment. From what I understood, you were saying that a Bitcoin-based system could lead more people to naturally experience higher vibrational states and higher states of consciousness. Could you expand a little bit more on how widespread enlightenment could be achieved through a Bitcoin system? Yeah, and this is, um, I, I, 
so so if you if you just if you simplify Bitcoin and, and I don't know who your audience reaches on here, Bitcoiners or the non Bitcoiners, but there's there if you're in the existing system and not, and not a Bitcoiner, what 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 you just said, what I said on Robert's uh, podcast, would be hard to bear because you're looking you'd likely to be looking at Bitcoin as a risk asset where a whole bunch of people think they're getting rich on it and they're only in it for that and it's this is a is this community that feels like it's it's feeling feeding back on itself and it looks and and it's pushing away rest of the community if you investigate it on its merit that all it is is a it, it's an open monetary network that anybody in the world can come into that has rules instead of rulers that that nobody controls that network and you have you have the same vote as anybody in um uh, in that work it's just it is literally just truth it's all of the network the longer the blockchain the more truth and it's just our, it, so it encodes our actions in it and it's based on truth instead of our existing system which is based on theft and and you have to ask yourself from that question what would a what would a world look like if it was based on truth um and and instead of what would a world look like if it was based on theft? And the mere reflection of the world that we live in, if it's based on theft, then the emergent complex behavior that arises from that theft would favor the people that could steal the most, would favor the people that would could could deceive the most, would favor the people that were could rise in a system based on theft. Um, and and that mere reflection of the world, what we would be operating in would look like that and we would be trying to chase ever ever more money to try to operate in a world that shouldn't look like that to be able to continue to and that would be a suck on our time and that would lead to anxiety and that would lead to fear and that would lead to um div uh, divisiveness uh, not just in, inside uh, countries but between nations because the entire thing was based on theft um so if the entire model of the world is based on the truth, you could expect the exact opposite to happen. You could expect the people who would win in that system are, the, are essentially the honest brokers, the value providers to society, the people that, that, uh, that don't need to steal to, uh, to win. And, and that time savings, that, we're, that you're not anxious in a system that's forever manipulating your time, that time savings moves to you, it accrues to you, and, and as prices fall as a result of technology, your time expands. And that time expanding, you probably do the things that it, you become more spiritual, you become, you, you might meditate, you might do things for others without an expectation of a return, because you don't need a return. And I, I, I recognize what I just said is really hard to see, for most of the population because they're living stuck in a system that it, they don't know is 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 essentially time theft from them but uh but but it seems obvious to me that what that would the emergent complex behavior of life look like on a system based on truth would look very different than the world than the emergent complex behavior based on theft and that's where i get to it's likely a, a a, 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 a higher consciousness over time for humanity. Um, from what I understand, ego death is the deconstruction of our sense of self through a deep process of self-awareness. I may be making assumptions, so please correct me if I'm wrong, but I have a feeling you may have gone through your own ego death experience, and I feel like Bitcoin can be part of an ego death experience in many ways. Do you have any advice for someone experiencing that? Um, so and and let's say ego death it might be a journey rather than a, like it's a, a maybe it's a destination maybe it, it's a kind of that enlightenment you anybody can reach it but it's a it's a journey and it's um i tend to look at myself even probably before bitcoin i tend to look at myself when i when i look around and i see everybody um essentially stuck in their own belief system of the world reinforcing that belief system and and telling people that 
and fight and essentially fighting for that belief system and reinforce and and then measuring their and then mad at them mad at the world it's just a mirror of yourself the world is literally a mirror of yourself if you see really great in people if you see love in people if you see um you're likely to attract more of those people um and so for me what i what i tried to do to be able to attack that is almost like an engineering problem um the and this this is a long <laughs> history of trying to attract that in my own life is is instead instead of looking outside of myself and saying that uh that okay here's this company that i need to fix here's how how to fix that company because in in a company you're trying to do the same thing where's the problem fix the problem fix the problem fix the problem trying to make that better what if you were the thing creating all value to in your life in a and touching every relationship and company and everything else what if you fixed you instead so i'm just pretty so i i typically look inward and when something happens in my life that it, it doesn't match my expectations i i take accountability that it must be me um or i look there first and i try to fix the things almost like an engineering problem i try to fix the things that um that that, that i I couldn't once see, and now I can see in me, and and so some of those fixes became the probably the biggest step functions in my life to create value ever everywhere else. Um, so I look, I, I typically look inward rather than outward. You said that if um, one of your relationships is like a five or six on a scale of ten, it's a reflection of how you're showing up. Exactly what you just talked about. I was wondering, how do you show up differently to bring it back up to a ten? We all uh, we all control our time. We control every single person in our life. We control. We, we all. Um, here, here's a here's a way into this, and it's probably an easy way. And for you, when you look at the picture, you don't look at all your friends in the picture or the other people in the picture first. You look at you. Um, and and when you realize that, okay, wait, I do that. I actually did that, and other people do that too. Then then you realize how much of a how how much of the self is involved in everything we do. And when you can minimize that self and you can say, huh, if it's if my relationship is a five, it's me. Um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and you look back on yourself, what you'll realize, what you might do, what I, I would do in that case is find out where I'm not showing up with intention. Find out where I'm not showing up where, where uh, with, with, Am I on my phone doing something else while while I'm in a relationship that I they say this time is my most important, or am I am I taking all my time away from a relationship that I say is important because that something else is 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 giving me love and connection in a different way and be it that be it money be it fame be it fortune whatever it is, am I actually true to is my time with the what is is it what I um, how would it show up to somebody else if it looked like that? How would, if they care about themselves too, and I showed up like that, what would it look like to them? So I always, I typically turn it back around myself, and inside that, turning it around, uh, that mirror back on myself, I often find it was me. Thank you so much for that, Jeff. Seriously, it's very helpful. Um, I noticed that a wide variety of spiritual leaders and intellectuals of different faiths and backgrounds have been saying that humanity is currently experiencing essentially a time of profound transformation. Some are calling it ascension. Uh, others are referring to a planetary shift from ego to soul consciousness, spiritual awakening, dark night of the soul. Anyway, what I find fascinating is that in seemingly unrelated spheres, although their content has nothing to do with finance or Bitcoin, they're also describing things that we just discussed that Bitcoin can facilitate. I was just curious, like what are your thoughts on the transition of systems from a spiritual or quantum viewpoint, if you had any? I think I think at the top of the mountain, it's exactly the same. I think on quant whether it's quantum, whether it's whether it's spiritual, whether it's engineering, all of these are different paths up the top of the mountain. And when you get to the if you got to the top of the mountain, at the top of the mountain, it all is just really simple. Um, you can see all of the different pieces and all of those different islands of it, misinformation or, or islands of information merge. And it's uh, it's it's one. If the world, if the if the universe is is quantum, then we are too. Um, then um, 
were were one with it and we were formed with it and that could lead you to spirituality it could lead you to engineering it could lead you to a whole bunch of different things it could lead you to uh, to science but i do believe these in fact it, it's interesting i find it really fascinating to find that some of the not religions as they look today but some of the essentially founders or people the 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 the, the religion was made up of the ideas that the religion was made up of um, are the are the same things that are some of the things that the spiritual leader some of the spiritual leaders would would talk about or some um, there there's there's amazing clarity in some of the in some of what that looks like <laughs> and and I and I just want I guess I wonder is it just a higher level of consciousness that somebody had at a certain time in a world of great uh, in, in a time of great upheaval um and did it did it appear to did religions appear to others um it through their eyes as somebody kind of that that was greater than everybody else and it was more of an it was it was more spiritual in nature than 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 dogma of a religion so i don't know um uh, and, and but but it seems to make sense out of out of what the what kind of at the what the world would have looked like at the time and what it would have looked like at the time to have somebody stand uh, uh, stand in, in a different spot in a power that uh, that that was uncompromised by that world looking like that the uh, <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> even when you look at some of the religious texts, and you talk, you said that um, it, the light can't be put out by darkness, right? I think it's just a different way up the mountain to what you the question you just asked. And when you're and, and when you're up at the top of the mountain, you kind of see it all pretty clear, uh, pretty clearly. I think that's what's, um, and we were we are going through a phase transition of society where it's it's obvious it's really obvious that the system cannot work like it does today it's incongruent technology technology brings prices down our existing system has to make prices go up and the world is feeling to everyone what's wrong what's wrong what's wrong what's wrong and there most of people are inside that system yelling at that system and some people are stepping out of that system to say uh, and and i think bitcoin does connect it I've not been able to get this out of my head since I heard you say it a few years ago. Uh, you said an inflationary monetary policy in a finite world guarantees that this world burns. Well, thankfully we have Bitcoin now as an alternate system, yeah. right? For the first time in human history. Um, I have a feeling you're not a prepper, <laughs> but <laughs> you have mentioned being prepared with geographical flexibility, notably with like with a second passport. Are you yeah. preparing for this system transition with like food, water, shelter, given that history says war is inevitable? The simple answer is yes. Um, I wish I didn't have to. I don't think, I don't spend a lot of time on, on that, but but I do think about, uh, why I think about it is, is many people um, are, if you looked at the world today and you looked at what I said in my book, if you looked at, um, it, Everything that's ha what, that we talk about, it was laid out in my book, and it's because if you're watching a trend line of exponential technology or let's say AI for 50 years, you could watch if it was log charted. You could watch the next, the next, the next, and so and and and, and so what people are doing is they're watching a frame of a movie instead of the movie, and and so they're predicting the frame, and then. And, and as as that happens, they're surprised by the next step, right? In 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 the book, I talked about how error intelligence, error correction was intelligence, and that we would see artificial intelligence doing things that we can't even imagine in a short period of time. And now, all of a sudden, bam! ChatGPT comes out, Auto GPT, all of these things, and people are surprised. And I'm and I'm kind of asking myself, how are you surprised, right? And and everybody now talking about what that looks like. Um, and they still haven't connected the dots as they race in to train the machines faster to be able to use it, to be able to be better than somebody else. They haven't connected the dots that that the $100 turns into 
uh, to, turns into $60 and they might capture more of the 60, but then somebody else is gonna capture more of the 40 than them. And, and then the machine's gonna capture it all. And if you have that system, just like they're, they're looking at frames and they're not connecting the dots from that movie to the financial, to fi the financial movie, and it's the same movie. Right. It's uh, I, and, and so for the life of me, I can't uh, I, 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 that's why it's, it's a little bit hard <laughs> to for me spending any time in that system, because it feels like I'm just it's it, it's really logical. This this and, and this path hasn't changed in 50 years and it's not going to change. It's going to keep happening. Um, and that same in that same path, if you look at the exponential increase in debt and manipulation of money, that's followed, followed the exact same path on the other way. <laughs> and why life doesn't look like it looks like for younger generation today, that it looked like it look, all the opportunity that people saw 50 years ago and what it looked like and all, all of the impacts all around, uh, around, that's why. And so it's really simple when you understand how the movie looks <laughs> instead of the frame of the movie. Do you think we'll experience a Bitcoin standard in our lifetime, or do you think we'll only live through the transition of systems? I, I think I will. I will live in a Bitcoin standard in our lifetime. I can't say that for every nation or every person, but every single person on the planet has an opportunity to start moving over and spending more of their time on a Bitcoin standard, and that'll get easier and easier as time rolls on. And so that choice will be left to every single person on the planet. It's um, uh, there were a lot of executives at Sears that could have moved to Amazon. Um, they stayed at Sears and they saw a different world unfold. Now that's a tiny example because it's one within the system instead of the entire system. And so their life would have looked like it gets, it's getting harder and harder and harder until the store just collapses and it, nobody cares. Well, an executive at Amazon's life was getting easier and easier and easier because they were on on a new on a new path. Now imagine that at a level that it impacted every other action ar around the world that was that much of a fabric of every single thing we did and it touched everything. That's what people that are living in a Bitcoin standard are, are seeing and they're going to see more. It's going to get a lot better for them. And that's actually why if you can empathize where other people are and understand what it might look like for them, then it's an easier way to, to have them explore what Bitcoin could look like as an escape hatch from that system. Um, should we use adoption rates to measure growth and success of the Bitcoin system? Yeah, it, you nailed it. Adoption rates of both Bitcoin and then Lightning, and then some of the technology that's built, being built on top when you see what Fetty is doing and Fediment is doing, and some of the other companies that are, that are essentially early in the, the phase of making Bitcoin move, move to the back where you don't have to talk about Bitcoin, you talk about all the value you get of products on top of that. Um, that'll bring on billions of people without them even realizing that's, that, that they've changed systems. And as, that, and as they start to understand, as they start to um, reinforce that new system because it gives them so much value, it'll bring others on too. I just like to imagine a little bit the Bitcoin model with you. So what would private property look like on a Bitcoin model of the world? This is a this is an interesting question because I don't think most people realize that the private property or the way that essentially the fractional reserve system works um, is uh, is really pegged to that private property and it's turned into an asset. So that private property is an asset that is needed to make that system work. And so in that system, you want more and more houses because they. Uh, the inflation favors that you pay back the debt in cheaper nominal terms and the inflation favors that um, and if that kept happening um, then what would happen is the 0.1 percent of rich would get wealthier and wealthier and wealthier and the 99 percent would get poorer and poorer and poorer um, and it would keep happening until such time that that the government would in, it would bring in a CBDC and at first, the rich would think, "Oh, this is great! I'm going to bring them in CBDC, um, and 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 do this. It doesn't. It favors me, anyways." And then that CBDC would be used to transfer that wealth and housing back to the other 99 percent. Otherwise, that government would be 
uh, would be out. So that the term that all of the next things that that are going to happen or that dictator would be out because the 99% would overthrow. Um, so all of these natural next steps of this system evolving when it can't evolve through fair trade or or, or real ru or rules means laws need to change to support the the system and individual rights and freedoms must uh, must go away as that applies to property in the other system in the new system priced in bitcoin prices of houses will fall to the marginal cost of production as well and prices of houses will be a utility again like they like it used to be like it was 60 80 years ago instead of a store of value that protects you against the monetary system. So as it falls to being a, a utility and you don't need 10, 20 houses to be able to save your value, then those houses come on the market and those houses sell in lower and lower prices in Bitcoin terms um, and prices fall of, uh, on, on housing. This is what we're describing here is so hard to see because people's biases from the existing system that they live in, it only works that way because you've effectively granted some authority and ability to change the monetary units underneath the entire uh, puzzle. Would it be similar for public services like security and roads? All, all that would have to change completely. It, it all changes completely, but what it does is it is there a, a different type of free market will emerge and that will be a free market of government and governments will be competing against each other all over the world to be able to attract citizens and value providers to their to their countries um, ver versus value extractors that w can and and by doing so they'll like, it, it, just just like today um, if you're trying to enter a, a country um, you 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 have to be a citizen that they need in a, 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 some sort of entrepreneur, something in a technology industry, you get to the front of the line. Or if you have a bunch of capital that you can invest in that nation, you get to the front of the line. So that won't be any different on a Bitcoin system. These countries are going to compete for labor and capital, and that labor and, and to compete for that labor and capital, they're going to have versions of the world that they're going to deliver uh, that they their society. Uh, the rules fit and those versions could um, vary really widely one version could say listen we're going to provide social support for a bunch of the population roads schools housing and and taxes are are going to be paid this way to be able to do that and they might say that's going to be a 20 percent tax and and a bunch of bitcoiners and a bunch of that mobility of capital will say i'm not going to that country and another country will say, we can do it for 10% because here's how it looks. And a different country will say 5%. And a different country will say 40%. There'll be a whole bunch of different ideas for what society will, will emerge. And those ideas will compete with, with each other to provide opportunities for, uh, uh, for populations. Um, and, and they'll keep competing to find the best models, what it, what it what it means is governments will get way smaller. I have a feeling that we'd be much more incentivized to think very, very far outside the box on a Bitcoin system. Like you've said in the past, um, there'd be more equality, much more brain power and insane technological innovation. That far down the road, of course, but do you think ideas like teleportation could eventually be a reality on a Bitcoin system like someday? I don't know. I don't know if teleportation specifically um, it, that that's probably a little far out for me right now. And in, in seeing um, uh, saying there, but just so if, if if you keep coming back to the things people care about m most, at least right now, um, it, here here's a uh, before I go there, I'll say so. Keynes projected a, a ten hour work week in two thousand and ten or two thousand twenty in a, in in a paper he wrote, I think it was 1923, called uh, The Economic Possibilities of Our Grandchildren. And what he, what he meant by that is a global average of 10 hours a week worked for more than you have now. Now, you can't measure a counterfactual because we don't live in that world. We live in a system that, based on his ideas, was manipulated for control, where some people don't work any. They extract the labor of everyone else. 
and and most people on this planet work way more than 10 hours. Um, and if you go to Africa or you go to other places, people work countless to to have almost nothing. And and so it what it's not the world that he projected, and he just projected kind of the same curves as I ta I'm talking about with technology. So that was in 2020. And today we have 2023, and you can see how fast technology is advancing. So we should have massive abundance in the world, abundance in just about everything, and we should be working global average, maybe five hours a week now. And next year it would come, it would be two hours a week, um, and and that's what could provide potentially a better lifestyle than uh, than people have today under a different system. Now it's it's almost impossible to see that. So it, it is impossible to see that system or that, that, that what I just said could be true because we're so, we're so scared of, well, if we go there and we don't have enough money and everything collapses and what do we do? So we stay in the existing, uh, we stay in the existing system, but where prices fall to the marginal cost of production and the marginal cost of production is exponentially getting cheaper. Then eventually things like, your food if a if a machine and and an ai that's way smarter than you can um if the machine falls it keeps falling because it's driven by technology and the ai is effectively free then why wouldn't food be free and why wouldn't some of the things that we think of today as having these high costs because and they're made higher because we live in a system that needs to uh, manipulate money um we can't see the very fact that all of this abundance is actually already, it, we already have all the tools to make it uh, abundant for humanity. We just don't have an operating system that'll allow it to flow to society. And Bitcoin is that operating system that allows it to flow to society. I'm gonna switch gears a little and talk about Noster. I know you've been talking about using it. I wanted to set it up, I wanted to give it a try, uh, but I got a little confused uh, for clients, I was wondering what are the financial incentives for clients and apps like Albi <laughs> to exist on Noster? Yeah, so you'll 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 love this because it follows it follows that um, idea. Prices fall to the marginal cost of production, and that means yeah, that means somebody like Will on Damas is it, who created Damas is a one person operation, creating all of that technology that's almost on par with what Twitter gives today. Um, and uh, still maybe a little clunky compared to, uh, to Twitter, but that this is this is again a snapshot of where it is now, not watching the movie, what ends up happening. And that's one developer. And so you don't need 10,000 employees to deliver that value. And as a result of not needing 10,000 employees to deliver the value and concentrate that power up into one person or a small team of people, um, the, the free moves to society. All of people benefit. Um, and, and so you can use these tools that are completely decentralized and you can move your, if, if Dama says tomorrow, I'm going to increase my price to $10 a month, you take all your followers and all your account to the next one who says I'll do it uh, cheaper. The same way that if a calculator app on your phone said they were going to charge you $10 a month, you would laugh, you'd, you'd laugh hysterically, right? Um, I, that's the piece that I actually can't imagine. People can't see because they experience it every day. They, and then they say, well, no, this other one has to be this much money because just because, right? <laughs> and in an operating system that looks different, all of these prices keep, keep falling exactly like your calculator app. Exactly like the photos, exactly like what we're doing right now, this video conference is, um, and if somebody charges more, you go, go to somewhere else because it's a line of code and that line of code drops to free. So being on Noster is like actually living in the Bitcoin system today. It's like exactly that. Yeah. And, and, and so, it, it, and, and it's a glimpse of what's happening. And then that value for value transit transition, when you see getting tipped or zapped, as they call it, um, on, on Noster. If I put up a post right now, I'll get a bunch of people giving me Bitcoin <laughs> because I provided value in their life. And it's wild. And so you're seeing an emergence. And so if you're spending more time there versus the other system, you're starting to see all of this opportunity and all of the other things that are, are possible. And we're really early. If you play out how that movie unfolds, it's pretty powerful. Um, 
given the transition is probably not going to be very easy. I wanted to ask you, how do you find stillness and inner happiness no matter what's happening around you? I, I, I own that too, because if I don't, it's me. Right. And, and, and so I, I, I typically do, um, through meditation, I do, I, I do meditate. I exercise, uh, I exercise a bunch. I spend time with people I love. I spend all the time with people I love and I just integrate the things that I like doing into those things so that it, it feels like uh, m my brother came with me to uh, Bedford um, uh, when, when I went on to see Peter McCormick and, uh, and see his uh, team play. And by the way, um, to see him as a podcaster and, is one thing, and I've, he's become a friend over time. But to watch what he's doing in that community out of a passion for football, and, and he bought a bar, and to, to watch, it, it, was, it was so cool to watch him in that role, which was not a Bitcoiner, um, but the merging of that. Um, and see kids come up to him and Uncle Peter, and it was like, it was so cool, cool. So so when you're around that all the time, you 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 merge. So my brother said to me, he, he said, I get it. He, he said, you're the same person here as, as you are in your, in your family, everywhere. And he said, you come off stage, why the people people want to talk to you is you're exactly the same person that you were on stage. It's just congruent, and so that actually that felt good because that's how it should look, right? And it should shouldn't be a different person in all of these different roles. It should be the exact same, and and that gives me it makes it, it makes me feel like okay, I'm doing that right, and it gives me value back. Uh, what would be your why? I know you were doing it for your kids. You've talked a lot about like that you want your so, kids to live in a better world. And, and I think I said this on Breed Love's podcast. The truth is, it's actually for me. All of these things are for me, right? And 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 I could pretend they're not, but but I get a lot out of um, out of if somebody else, if I've helped somebody make a difference in their life, it actually feels really good. Now I have to be careful because it feels so good. You could do want to do that all the time, and you could take the, uh, you could take that from your family. You could take from the people that you say you love most, and you could do that because it feels so good. Um, so, I, I think that I just know myself, and I know I could easily do that. But it, but but when you make when what you, what you said, you made a difference in my life. That feels pretty special. Um, so I I would say that's what that that's why I do, and I have to be careful that that I don't tell myself a lie <laughs> and take that time and do that all the time and take that time from, from other people that I love. So I'm just balanced in it. I'm trying to find balance still, but it's inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff, thank you for your courage in bringing your error corrections and ingenious ideas to the world. You've really helped me consolidate my values and contrarian beliefs into something <laughs> meaningful, hopeful, and actionable. Uh, thank you for providing so much of your time over the years to eloquently articulate such a profound paradigm shift with such a high degree of discernment and integrity. Where can people find you? Uh, probably on, on Noster or uh, jeffbooth.ca is a website that I put together so I could put my content. Oh, by the way, and I and my wife just updated it with uh, with all the top books that I've read over the last year. year. So, uh, so thanks to her on that because I get asked that question often. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. You bet. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye.